us as officials. Please, thank you very much for understanding.
the president uh, and the cabinet, the ministers, our regular chaplain within the National House, CEO, can you please open the session with the prayer? allocated a responsibility to him to say he must be in charge of the interministerial task team. I personally traveled with him throughout the country to meet traditional leaders and some of the communities. There are many provinces where he immediately effected changes. In Free State, I was with him. In Northern Cape, I was with him. In Northwest, also, I was with him. So on behalf of the institution, I would just like to pay uh, our utmost gratitude to him and convey our well wishes. And we also hope that uh, the new deputy president <coughs> will continue where uh, the erstwhile uh, uh, stopped. So we thank uh, him very much and we thank you for sending him to the institution to come and do all the work that he did. We would also, on the last part of giving thank yous, we would also like to appreciate the new appointments that have been done, uh, the political appointments in our institution. We have a new minister and a new deputy minister. We are highly expectant as an institution that they will be able to effect the necessary and agent changes that we require as a rural people. Uh, we hope they will be able to galvanize resources 
that will uh, assist the rural people to move from where they are to a better position. So we welcome uh, the new minister and the deputy minister. We look forward to working with you. So thank you very much. Uh, on the substantive issues, in 2019, that was the first time I, I was in parliament through the National House and I was billed as one of the speakers to make a, a contribution on behalf of the institution. One of the key things I said there, President, and you were still the head of the AU then, I said to you that uh, the continent is the continent, the African continent is the one continent that has the youngest uh, generation across the world. And that is also visible in our institution. We've got a lot of young traditional leaders and they are understanding of power relations and their patience is completely different to our parents, the likes of Jose Mokwena and others. I remember part of his speech in 2019, he was also reiterating what government has promised over the 25 years and nothing was done. So fortunately or unfortunately, I'm here as the leader of the institution. We are reiterating that fact again, uh, His Excellency, that we have been patient for a very long time as an institution, waiting for changes to come from government. Very little is, is coming. Infrastructure development in rural areas is very poor. When it's time for floods, we are the most affected. The responsive time is also very slow coming from government. So we have been doing this, uh, opening the National House each and every financial year and coming to a debate. But we are getting very little uh, out of that. Young traditional leaders, and most of them, you know, are attorneys. The, the choice of the course when they get to universities is law. So they come to us and they say, but why do you continue to to approach things in this manner. Why don't you change the way? Because you, you, us as the institution, we are recognized in terms of the constitution. You have rights, but you are scared to exercise them. Why do you continue to do the same thing every year and there are no results? Is it not time to change things? Uh, it, and as young people, uh, one of our elders in the house usually says, why don't you do things with the exuberance of youth? So, President, I'm just relaying the frustration of the institution to say we are here. Most of us know that there's nothing much that we will get out of this engagement. And we do not, as young uh, leaders in the institution, we do not expect that we will continue to do the same thing over and over. What we are expecting is change. And it's worse because uh, the Congress movement is now regarded as a rural party to a certain degree. Now we become so shocked when uh, the Congress movement when it's reliant on the votes of our people and the support of traditional leaders, but they continue to treat the institution with disdain. So hence we are saying we are highly uh, expected that uh, the new lead political leadership will effect the necessary changes. It cannot be that 30 years later we are still talking about the same things my grandfather spoke about with government we are expecting that we should be dealing uh, with issues of more substance. So we welcome uh, you, President, to this engagement. There are key issues which the Deputy Chairperson of 
the national house and the institution in, it, in its entirety, Bele will be conveying in much detail issues such as safety of traditional leaders. There are a lot of killings that are going on, particularly in KZN and Eastern Cape. But we are starting to see a new trend in Limpopo and also in Pumalanga, especially traditional leaders who are within the borderlines. Minister Mutwale, the issue that we spoke about. When you are a traditional leader and you are along the border, if you call people to order who are misbehaving in the community or they are committing criminal activities, it's more likely that they will call uh, people who are not documented to deal with you and they quickly go back uh, to their province. So we are happy that you have engaged us, but we hope that uh, that matter will not end there. We will continue to take it further and ensure that uh, appropriate measures are put in place so that the safety of traditional leaders in KZN and all the provinces are attended to. We, as we are here as the president and the deputy president and uh, the cabinet, we are all public office bearers. What we see generally is that when a politician has a, a threat uh, from whatever position, there's a very quick response to that threat. But traditional leaders are also public office bearers. Uh, when there is a threat to a traditional leader, we do not see uh, that kind of uh, effective response. So those are some of the issues that uh, we are welcoming you with. We hope that traditional leaders will be free to uh, discuss the matters. The deputy chairperson uh, will take us through uh, what our issues and represent where it's necessary uh, Hosima will come in and assist him uh, so thank you very much feel free we hope to have a productive day thank you very much You know, last year the, the convener was the deputy president. So my expectation is that he will come in and take over the program. I forgot that I'm the program director. <laughs> yeah, hey. you see, that is why we miss uh, the deputy president so much, because he took care of us. Uh, <laughs> In terms of our program, uh, we are on the second item, acknowledgement of attendees by the new minted uh, Deputy Minister, uh, Prince Bansing Amashe. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, DC, for rescuing me. <laughs> President, I, I always avoid uh, standing uh, between the chair and the deputy because they expose uh, my uh, limitation of being vertically challenged. Uh, His Excellency President Matamela Ramaphosa Ah, Pondo Zanyati. <laughs> Chairperson of the National House of Traditional and Khoisan Leaders, Jose Tabo Milton Siatulo. Rapula, Deputy Chairperson 
of the National House of Traditional and Kuisan Leaders, Ngosi Langa Mavuso, as well to me, Bell. Members of the Executive of the National House of Traditional, Lead, Traditional and Khoisan Leaders, members of the Provincial Houses of Traditional and Khoisan Leaders, Your Majesties and Royal Highnesses, fellow traditional leaders, President of Kondralesa, Hoshi Matupa Mpwen. Deputy President Jose Nyalala Pilane, Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Ms. Tembisile Ngadimeng Mbembe. Deputy Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Mr. Pax Tau Gwen. Honorable Zolane Mkiva, General Secretary of the Congress of Traditional Leaders of South Africa, Khenwa. Mr. Cecil Lifleur, Chairperson of the National Khoisan Council, Ministers and Deputy Ministers, Members of Parliament, esteemed guests, government officials, captains of business industry, members of the media. Today, as we gather for the annual National House of Traditional Leaders and Khoisan Leaders debate with the President, there are several things that would have to change going forward. This event is not a, a tick in the box for the department that after here we all go to our different places and nothing happens until we meet again next year this time around. Let me phrase it this way. The department's strategic plans and annual performance plans must be informed by the issues raised directly by traditional leaders. In that way we would be directly responding to the institution. Certainly it will not be business as usual. Mr. President, the issues to be raised here today during the debate, some would be new, but in the most, it is the same old legacy issues that were raised when this house was constituted 26 years ago. At least, I was privileged to be one of the first pioneers and trailblazers in 1997 on the 10th of May when the first president of South Africa, President Nelson Mandela, inaugurated the National House of Traditional Leaders when it was referred then as the National Council of Traditional Leaders. President, during the 2023 opening, of the House, you gave issues for implementation by the Department in adding your voice to the call for the formalization and strengthening of the functioning of the Kings and Queens Forum. To quote your words, you said, we see the Kings and Queens Forum as an important platform to tap into the collective wisdom of our Majesties. The forum will help us to address disputes around traditional leadership, gender-based violence, and other social ills, initiation challenges, and others. The forum will help us to document the history of our nation and the role of traditional leaders in our struggle and development as a nation." Unquote. In a 2023 State of the Nation address, the President emphasized the importance of forging a consensus among all sectors of our society to rebuild our economy and address the developmental needs of our communities. Minister Ngatimeng, in 2019, the President was given a copy of the Invest 
rural master plan by the late Inko Sisi Pomashangu Nzonza. May his soul rest in peace. The president has provided guidance and given impetus that the master plan should find expression in the cabinet through the processes of cabinet to ensure that this blueprint deepens socio-economic development in rural communities. Thus, Deputy Minister Tao Kwen, as the Kokta family, the President reminded us that during the opening of the House this year, that the local government summit last year took a resolution that the Invest Rural Master Plan should be consulted with all municipalities for it to inform their plans. We will be working together, Mr. President, to achieve this ideal. My task, of course, was to acknowledge the attendees. However, it is important that in the next few months before the end of the sixth administration, fellow traditional leaders, Sizwa Sabenza, Sizwa Sabenza, it's not a promise, it's a commitment to ensure that the voices of the traditional leaders find expression in the overall performance of the department as well as government in general. Fellow traditional leaders, having served in parliament, in the Portfolio Committee on Trade, Industry and Competition, I'm sure that working together as different partners, the Invest Rural Master Plan will find expression in all government departments. This will also assist us in our resolve to extricate the institution from the jaws of chronic overdependence. Our work, Minister Ngadimeng, has been clearly articulated by the President that we need to, quote, convert rural development challenges into investable opportunities covering such critical areas as infrastructure development, agriculture, service delivery, financial inclusion, and rural enterprise development. My task, uh, before I get swayed into the maiden speech, let me get to the business. In our midst, I will introduce the ministers and deputy ministers who have honored uh, this engagement today, as I have already acknowledged uh, my fellow traditional leaders. Uh, first is our minister for the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Minister Tembe Nkatimeng, Mbembe. Secondly, we have Minister Aaron Mtswaledi, Minister for the Department of Home Affairs. Thirdly, no, you can clap with the hands in acknowledging ministers. Uh, may I also ask, I know uh, in terms of government protocol, uh, Minister, I'm the Deputy Minister, uh, but let me exploit that position of being a traditional leader. And when I acknowledge you as a minister, uh, just stand so that you can be seen. <laughs> now I'm commanding you using my royal cap. Uh, the third minister, Tula Singlesi, minister for labor and employment, Vumba Lempongo Liano. Thank you. 
Minister of Sport, Arts and Culture, Minister Zizi Kodwa. Amen. <laughs> Minister Barbara Chrissy of the Department of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries. Uh, maybe Minister will have to give you a clan name uh, so that whenever you come to the House of Traditional Leaders, uh, we, are, we will refer to you uh, using that clan name. Uh, Minister of Public Works and Infrastructure, Minister Sile Zikalala Kuzi. Minister Ronald. Lamola of Just Justice and Correctional Services. It's a very, you know, when you see Minister Sigalala standing up, and then you hear, and you see. <laughs> and you see Minister Lamola. <laughs> uh, Minister Kumbuzo Nchaveni. Uh, department, the presidency. Uh, Your Royal Highness. Your Royal Highness. Uh, let me now acknowledge uh, the Minister of Human Settlements, Minister Kubai. Uh, um, I will now acknowledge Deputy Ministers Deputy Minister Pax Tau, Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Quen. Uh, I know uh, maybe we'll have to find some word in Johannesburg and install him as a headman there. <laughs> uh, Deputy Minister Bohopane Zulu, Department of Social Development. <laughs> Deputy Minister Buti Manamela, Department of Higher Education. And uh, Buti, I need your clan name next time. Uh, and of course, the last one being my predecessor, um, the Deputy Minister for Public Enterprise, uh, Obet Bapela. In our midst, uh, Mr. President, we have the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee, Honorable F.D. Kasa Mgwat. If you don't acknowledge the chairperson of the portfolio committee, you may be in trouble. Uh, we will uh, acknowledge uh, other guests uh, probably when the chairperson uh, concludes those who may not have been uh, taken note of uh, in their names, but all of you, ladies and gentlemen, all in Sandri, you are acknowledged. Uh, thank you, uh, DMK Nakuyahore, the deputy chairperson of uh, the National House of Traditional. Uh, and Khoisan leaders to come to the platform uh, and address issues. Is you first? <laughs> the deputy president must come back. <laughs> Newly minted minister, uh, the floor is yours.
So DM, never mind, you are not the only one. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director, who's also our chair for the National House of Traditional and Khoisan Leaders, Rapulan. Uh, apology accepted. <laughs> I have to work with you. What can I do? <laughs> Honorable President of the Republic of South Africa, President Cyril Ramaphosa, our Deputy Chair for the National House of Traditional Leaders and Khoisan, Nkosi Mavuso Langa, Azuli Dumile, our Cabinet Ministers present here, together with our deputy ministers present here, the chairperson and deputy chairpersons of our provincial houses for traditional and Khoisan leaders, members of the national house of the traditional and Khoisan leaders and its council, the secretary general as well. Um, I was just taught uh, his clan name today and I'll take time to go and practice it Already DM has fined me in booze. But I was very, I felt very warm. President and Deputy President of Contralesa, Maroshi in Kosabantuana Betuabasheka Mukabona, uh, the chair of our portfolio committee, Honorable Tlasa, and other members of the committee, our representatives for the chapter nines and our partners, director generals and other officials, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Your Excellency President Ramaphosa and Your Royal Highnesses and honored guests, it is indeed an honor for me to join this meeting today in an opportunity to debate the contribution of the president and the opening of the National House of Traditional and Khoisan Leaders. Honorable President, the maiden speech has already been made by the Deputy Minister, and I will just take touch there and there as matters of emphasis, but also to make sure that we bring and allow more time for our traditional leaders to engage with us and we've been responsive together with the work streams that ministers are going to be giving brief reports on. But we are grateful for the platform provided by the House of these communities to also voice their concerns and developmental needs. Traditional leaders as custodians of culture and heritage represent all South Africans, especially those who are historically underrepresented, disadvantaged, or vulnerable. The idea of a dialogue was born out of challenges that the National House of Traditional and Khoisan Leaders experienced in the past and they're still continuing to experience as the chairperson has alluded to. We're still going to get a full observation by the deputy chair just as I take leave in the, off the podium. But the issues which were raised through the debate indicate that it is only the president and ministers who are to give progress on their plans that involves the rural municipalities. But of course we will take a lead and ensure that we assist, we work together with the house and also the traditional leaders themselves. In our inception meeting with the deputy minister, we have already worked on a out framework on our tools of trade, which we ens will ensure that as the notice is issued in July for all our municipal councils, we comply with provision of tools of trade also to traditional leaders. They are also entrenched in the Systems Act and the Structures Act on how municipalities are supposed to assist. What committee formula level also, which needs to ensure that uh, traditional representation is done at a what committee level, nine community leaders and one mediate traditional house where those uh, what committees are found or those words are found. The passer is to be streamlined in ensuring that the houses themselves but also Maroshi uh, Arena are able to take their children or themselves to school to invest in the capacity of the traditional leaders 
to understand the developmental goal that government has set itself, but also to be part of change agents as they are by their own right in our societies. DM has touched on the Invest Rural Master Plan. I wouldn't go much there. Appreciation has been given uh, to the interministerial task team which was led by the Deputy President. I must also echo that sentiment, Honorable President. The DG in our welcoming uh, new role, old new years, uh, did give up a very clear file which indicated the areas and the grounds that have been covered and for us to be able to go forward in the implementation. And I trust that myself and the two deputy ministers will be able, therefore, to continue on the firm foundation that the deputy president has uh, laid. The DM, as I conclude, will visit all provincial uh, houses in the next uh, three, four weeks, which we have targeted to ensure that as we issue out uh, the notice uh, in July would have covered all the key issues. Partnership, therefore, with the Department of Public Works, amongst other departments in terms of the improvement and the building of traditional offices and houses, is one of the key targets that we will look into in at least ensuring that this year we manage the issue of tools of trade and the space where they are working and we'll work into issues of incentives naturalization of them and all those challenges which still remains in what was handed over to our office. Program Director, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to talk to Abantwana Bath from Umpen. Uh, uh, Bele, the platform is yours. Thank you, Chair. Mongameli. Well, is a long since Africa. Before I was on my own club, I saw a leg. Was the fund is a sickle of honor. Who cut a log begani? Come cool. My man in Gossi, we quasar. Go was I your tools. What shall I get? Say Cassel. Wakashela knows where you are chick. Go among a melee, Munanza on Gena, end me. Mongameli, as I set the scene for this debate, I want all of us to reflect on the following, among others. Progress made after all the engagements between government and traditional leaders last year, 2022. Issues raised by the President during the opening address. The institution is waiting for the report on progress made. Otherwise, this engagement is thus the social talk. As issues are being raised, the question that must come to our mind is that are our ministers willing to live up to the challenge or not? The above statement, if answered genuinely, will highlight that some national departments and provincial governments are specializing in lip service. They do not respect their commitments at all, Mongamil. Some, if not all, conveners of the IMTT deliberately ignored or looked down upon the directives from the then Deputy President to hold extreme meetings. It would have surprised us to see all conveners in attendance here today. They are just showing how the sector is being regarded by your ministers. Our focus of this dialogue, Mohamed, will focus on the uniform treatment of traditional leaders across the country. The long-awaited handbook for traditional leaders budget for traditional leadership structures, land release, the only 13% land 
left with us as black people. Mining and rural areas for economic development. Cultural tourism for rural economic development. Our partnership with SALGA, DTA as a standalone department. Tukumamele mongameli kubufula kesona who said you have given a task to treasure that you must reconfigure departments. You must consider of bringing arts and culture to traditional affairs, rural development to traditional affairs, and extreme daka kodu. The King's Forum on Amelie you talked about, so that our kings can have a platform where they engage. Infrastructure development, communication, and digital technologies, a partnership with Sarafkan Police Service, initiation, recognition of coincidence, reconstitution of Ingaila, effects of dispute amongst royal families. Amakos raised the following issues which have not been adequately addressed, especially on MIMEC. HOT is of KZN and Eastern Cape are always crying, because in KZN, they have about 320 senior traditional leaders. In the Eastern Cape, they have 232. So I call like as Uncle Kelly Although in Pumalanga, you'll find that they are 45. And in our Northwest, they are a minimal number. But this issue, Mohamed, must be addressed because that cannot be an excuse to support traditional leaders in those two provinces. The IMT Mohamed promised to build chambers for all provincial houses who do not have. It's only the Eastern Cape that has a chamber of traditional leaders. Aibukeki Yolendo Kuzin. Masbalege na Yolendo Kobaune buildings is na Sibenziyo. Pese wazulu natal na ngoku. The whole legislature yinike nukosba wazulu. Ni transfer ni lungis. Same applies to Northwest, all those old legislatures. We don't need to build a new structure. They are there. At some point in time, I remember the Gamma House in Cape Town was about to be given to National House as a chamber. It was 1997 then, but that thing just slipped through our fingers. I think we can do this, Susan. Ukaulezi said, we have 15 months. When Zalbana was a boy. It's a handbook for traditional leaders. And as Mohameli, the way that document is a top secret, we have not seen it, singers and girls. And I implement handbook for traditional leaders. handbook. It must be addressed, this handbook, for traditional leaders. And of course, traditional and Khoisan leadership act is coming up with a number of challenges to the institution. But that legislation, Mohamed, has not been budgeted for. It's established local houses to work with teaching municipalities, but the local houses, Sitibanela, Panquesasa, Kuzi, Nokabandu, and Abengus, Abanau Tibanela, Panquesasa, Amapagati, Etibanelinsi. On issues of youth development, Abandoana versus Lalini, they don't access uh, government services around issues of youth development. It's West Mohameli, some they don't even have data. Timwasalis Mohameli, during the registration at Forte, you would see Imi Koti Abandoana stranded with Silipanji, Abazanova, Mitiwe, Abazanova, 
pattern, but she was a security gate in. This thing should be done because should be dealt with because at least now good dala the pattern sing up and yam. The release of land, Mohammed. Mohammed Quite an autumn Dagana Mashe, Illy Feshagan Alo, Mogum Shabaka. Mogum Mohammed, Um Shabas Yawas, Mohammed. Also Funyano, a tough lane. Mogas now was a pizza, Kalo thirteen per cent. Sam Kayala Mohammed, Miss Kulel and a power eighty seven. Who's a bell lalin? Siavana Sivene will learn summit, no mamutitis. That there must be two systems of land tenure LLA. One, the outer boundary. Ama Lelo, Ama Simi, Ama Nwaba, a title deed that must be given to the traditional council. Even Namdi goes, I cannot mortgage against that land. Kakufikwa Pekaya, if Singabandwana, Abane, Uta Tuko Ananumama, a title deed, Pume, and that land mongamele anakwa no more against yona ngoba uza kuti ngosikazwa imfundi national mali yosabantwana ACT tata le title deed yakho wena uyise bhangi and mongamele in nature, it was a man who 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 was a was not under relatives team so that in Alasheki, Rom Sabawetu, Pile Ali. there's a process, Kutalage, Sisilwa, Nos Plum. Kutale, Nyoka Pagatinli, Savana, Momamil, Wana Noko, Agno Figin daughter, Esuga Pai Houtin, Ifigit Apa, Kuzava Kwamangu, Apa, Namasim, Nokos Nanyoka Momamil. Kenduku. Aina kwenze kalondo. Kia bona kala ke, uminister titiza, there is amendment, ayenza ayo, kulam teto, so that, inko si participate, em slave no wat. Kwa zumutu mwom slave mwonga meli, is a sensitive issue. Mwonga meli on mining, we want to participate, as funu buke ela, pamku etu mwonga meli, kumainwa, kucheba, amato, talape kuhuli, esi shia tina, paima kaya, silambili. We need to participate in the full economy of our country. Cultural tourism, Mohamed. Ushla loge, ushla hongu mzegelo, ke initiation. Mohamed, he go out for a pepper misiku. Se itenge fameni, yomlungu. He go usha, yoko chisa, se itenga fameni yomlungu. He go omu yomkiti, se itenga yomlungu. He blanket is a maquala, says Tanga, M. Lungui. In Bola Libonfu, see Tanga, M. Lungui. And it beats it too, if you notice that record, some are from China. They are assets to the China. Ufikanoko, Umbombailo, Angmanyanyan, with beats. So we need to participate in that cultural tourism. Partnership with Salga. Mongamel in many provinces. For instance, when I was a chairperson of the Eastern Cape House of Traditional Leaders, I was part of the PEC, yes, Salga. <laughs> Trying to deal with these challenges at local level, as yes, Otoku, the like councillors, and traditional leaders. And even yesterday, I presented at the Indaba in Friday the Invest Rural Master Plan. So we're working together. Will be signing an MOU soon. Sandy Kavarshle, Department. Mongamele, the King's Forum. 
Wine program of visiting all the kings of the country. The last king we visited was Ukumkani Umisizu, whereby she presented programs it. She chilo ke kuya Mohammed that unomla to establish this king sovereign, so that Ukumkani you have a platform of discussing in Nagi Zelizwe and see how you can work together. We take zelele kakuru londo zina temba ubana isaulunga on economic development. Mamu Papa Chris come from Eastern Cape on the coast, the wild coast. At night, we see boats that are fishing there. And they live with our fish, Per Lamun, and others. You should work with traditional leaders and see how we can work with you as a department to deal with those problems. And of course, people that are fishing for just for survival, they must be given permits in those coastlines. And secondly, we wish that you form bioprospecting agreements for the alu, pelagonium, and many of these uh, plants that we have. On issues of national treasury, uh, Minister Weito Amcha and the Deputy Minister I will leave the National Treasury. Kuni no teach, no teta, na landota, injoli. On infrastructure development, munga meris ndikufile kwisona, you spoke of Mzimvu Butem. I was excited when we spoke about it because kutala kutetwa kalendu. And I wish that unkosi mabandla and all traditional leaders that are close on Mzimvu participate in that uh, project and all other infrastructure development across the country. Communication and digital technologies. But like we have failed the former Minister of Communications, Colomba, Minister Shafin. Uti good. He wants to connect all traditional leaders across the country. He was expecting 8,547, but he now have submitted only 1,231. And we wish uh, Minister uh, Notuk Porta will follow this up and talk to um, Minister Okungubele. On South African Police Service, we have a partnership with SAPS on traditional policy. This program, Mohameli, it has been implemented to the kings, and we want it to go to traditional councils. And Mohameli, Going forward, it's safe to eat Kobe Mohamed. In case at end, between 35 and 40 traditional leaders have been gunned down. In the Eastern Cape, there are two. In Limpombo, on the border of Zimbabwe, Ingos has been killed. Ogospin Mohamed, Umna, Ungos is a solo, the protector is Nyan. Hey, Nyan. Our ancestors are those that are protecting us. The Amba and Shei Mohammed, Sas Novana, Saubet, or what? We don't have security, Mohammed. All provincial chairpersons, they do not have security. Given local houses, Mohammed Lendo must be addressed. Nampa, Kualalami Pondo, who went down this paper, Tingas again, Kobandinang Nagana, Sam's apart. So, my family, the Akela, Snetwe, Kulum Timbi. On GBV and human trafficking, my family, and goes in with Palakanda Kanda, Ungu Minister, Monko Panezu. Whenever the Kala Guye City, my Minister, there's a disaster, 
Uncle Smukach, Chang of Flats in Pomanak. That deputy minister, Agatim, was said, Uamba Nati, Okokok. If the National House is working somewhere, figure Paya, si visit early childhood development centers, Skangalo si Mama, Abafuna and those Otunga, Chalonjalo, Diakonda, Mamma Kopanazulu, Ilendo, Uyinkoskas, Yakom Kur, and Kosis. Mama Mel on the customary initiation. Just I'm Mama Mel. No queen number in my province is 10 kids. Yes, and in other provinces, we wish to work with the National Initiation Committee led by Ingosi Matlangu Unzunza to deal with challenges that are faced with initiation. We have partners that are partnering with us to deal with these issues. The question recognition, Mongamel, is not timber, Kobakanda, Kanda Bacha, Usnikebona. Is a mover, don't think. Reconstitution of traditional councils. Some across the country, the building are still intact. They just need a paint and about 10 mazingi, and they have renovated and windows. It's something that we can do. Even get partners like Cash Build, Build Right, and so on and so on. We deal with these issues. I don't think the issue of Aiko Imal we should be talking long. But we do have partners in business that can assist with this. Issues around dispute within the institution. Uh, Cosma then then come will add some flesh. Mongameli, then the cross collar transport. Abandona, as a laline, a corner, you don't have a car with this collar transport. That man, a man, one hour and a couple of education and in Bonuma range. For Abandona, the Fakwe, a parking in Gemfa, and a number plate. I and and so on. And this is what say when those children get an accident. It's something that education must partner with in course so that it's been a mess for a whole man in rural areas. But I need to go in the Pretoria, what is happening in Northwest. So we need that partnership. On the health issue, Mungameli, we request that mobile clinics must go to area set. And perhaps the Department of Health must share with us the burden of disease profile of the country so that we know so that we can assist some of them, they will dump in medical waste and down the line we want some of them to check me now, we, we said we need to partner with local government so that we pass bylaws. But once they throw away those nappies, in are crazy. So this matter, it needs to be addressed. So we need to work with local government, Tarutao, so that was at local level, a bandu that are given a function of making legislation, addition municipalities and municipalities. Secondly, Mama, Papa Christian, I grew up umnuma unga kaolo, umnuma is just wild olive, and umtat wild olive umti as a seven zisa when we perform a sick. Inya mi bego kona as kid. You get a permit from the tribal authority one who's our Kaulela Don because we were protecting the environment. Kula Mwa Melimna Kusitiwa Ungawa Kipsili Amache Mlanjin Kukwa Bandu Panga Pans. It's Kurkumi Yawika 
umlambo kwendi mjala ngomai utata wa ensure change island akoban pa that was the way of conserving the environment so if we can begin to deal with those issues we can go far I think Mohameli, this was just an introduction into the dialogue that is about to take place. I was only introducing matters for consideration. We hope that some response and commitment will come out of this engagement. We opted for a dialogue instead of a debate because we wanted our engagement with government to be rich and focused. Our approach is not to criticize, but be honest with the truth. Mohamed, we are faced with a country with many challenges. Tina, we want to work with you. Tarmu Tualet, let's be some of the illegal immigrants. The Salabos Alalis, in my town, Alice, there are only two black people that are owning shops. All of them are owned by Pakistans. And all those buildings, they belong to public works. How do they access those buildings? Abant was missing. So you can't even like it. Cause them kala pakut. Can't even like Mohammed. Of course, they never think they're going They have closed down. And Lama Tota, Mohammed Abeni Abuza, I part a lot of texts. Zanda Baba na se panki in Mohammed. Lama Tota of Fagimal. And as Mali Abu, I clean up. So it's an issue that we need to deal with. As will do me, as will do me, Raleigh with a comprehensive presentation of our key pressing issues. Uh, Hosima B will come in a bit later in terms of uh, our program we've also made a minor change uh, the president will not be speaking now but will be speaking a bit later uh, in wrapping up issues after hearing presentations of uh, various ministers and deputy ministers uh, now we will be getting to the work streams and the first culprit will be the owner of the 13% of the land. Uh, I saw her in the morning. I don't know where is she now. Uh, she, you know, the saddest part about this whole thing is that it's an apartheid old legislation, and our our black government just continued with it uh, you know and continued to make rural people babies uh, if you are a traditional leader in your community you can take whatever decision you want if the minister has not assented to that then your decision is pointless so you know in a democratic dispensation uh, you wonder how can a community take a decision uh, uh, together with the traditional leader and it's null and void if the minister has not assented to to that decision we hope she will address uh, how many months she's left with to Yes. She's joining virtually. So is is he ready to come in? Can you do a mic test uh, please? Who is assisting with uh, the technological issues? Can he speak so that we can hear if he is audible or not? I guess sir, you're referring to me. Yes, yes. Uh, DM, I'm referring to you. Can you just quickly tell us uh, when are you going to transfer the 13% and when do you plan on retaining the 87% of the land? Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, uh, Program Director. His Excellency President Ramaphosa, Program Director, the Chairperson of the National House, the Leadership and President of Contralesa, Tate Lufier, Ministers and Deputy Ministers, let me start by profoundly apologizing for Minister Titiza who could not make it this morning. My second apology would refer to the fact that it would have been preferable if I was physically present. But because of matters that have to do with bereavement in the area of Eston, I could not physically be present. Ladies and gentlemen, on the 21st of March, we will be celebrating Human Rights Day with the theme, Leave No One Behind and Walk for Your Rights, where South Africans will be remembering the struggles and sacrifices paid for the attainment of democracy and the protection of human rights in the country. Built upon the unforgettable tragic event of the 21st of March in Shabdi, where innocent people were butchered, shot and killed, violating their human rights, the Bill of Rights as enshrined in the Constitution is the cornerstone of democracy in our country. It enshrines the right of all the people and affirms the democratic values of human dignity, equality and freedom. I will therefore chair address the issues related to the mainstream and the questions that you, you have just advanced. South Africa's liberation struggle can be properly defined as the struggle for land, and hence land reform is the very critical component of the democratic dispensation. South African history includes years of colonialism and apartheid that were based on the land dispossession and racial discrimination of the indigenous people and the black majority. The colonial conquest consisted of land dispossession, alienation, exclusion and marginalization of our people. These magnified the challenges of poverty, inequality and unemployment in our country. Wars of dispossession gave rise to the colonial and apartheid regimes over centuries, enacting racist legislation including the 1913 Land Act. This act left black people landless, and where they had land, their tenure rights were generally insecure. Hence, you, Chair, and Gosima Buso were speaking about the 13%. Since the inception of the democratic dispensation, the coexistence of our government or to adopt laws to redress what the president normally refers to as the original sin. The democratic government adopted the constitution in 1996 based on all being equal before the law. Land reform in South Africa is informed by section 25 of the constitution premised on three pillars is being land redistribution to enable citizens to gain access to land on an equitable basis. The second being land tenure, which ensures that the tenure is legally secured. And the third one being land restitution, providing redress to those who are dispossessed of land rights through discriminatory laws and practices. 
in order to fulfill the provisions of the Constitution. Various acts of Parliament have been enacted post-1994. Key issues on access to land and tenure rights. Approximately 2.7 million people live on land owned by others in commercial farming areas and are therefore vulnerable to evictions. About 17 million people living in communal areas hold informal land tenure rights that are not recorded nor registered. Millions of South Africans that live in informal settlements, backyards, inner city buildings, whose occupation is sometimes unlawful and insecure. A growing trend of tenure insecurity of members of communal entities that have obtained land ownership through land reform programs. Overlapping land tenure rights on similar pieces of land which require cost-effective adjudication mechanisms and existing tenure rights issued in terms of legislation that discriminated against women. Land tenure reform program director is central to the land question in our country. Therefore, securing and strengthening land tenure rights of people who live in privately owned or commercial farming areas and communal areas is critical in addressing the plight of the poor and most vulnerable communities. Section 25 stroke 6 provides that, I quote, a person or community whose tenure of land is legally insecure as the result of past discriminatory laws or practices is entitled to the extent provided by an act of parliament either to tenure which is legally secure or comparable redress." Unquote. Our department doesn't want to leave anyone behind and therefore committed to facilitate the development of a legislative framework that is consistent with our constitution both in ensuring the realization of persons and communities' constitutional rights. After a land summit with this constituency we are speaking to today, in 2017, our government decided to constitute an all-inclusive delegation to answer the question of 13%. The delegation was to embark on a consultative process in countries that had navigated a transition from an oppressive regime to a democratic order. We were not there to export what they had done. It was a consultative process that was going to serve as a learning curve. But our situation was understood as being unique. This delegation was led by COCTA, DARDRD, and Justice, including in that delegation the traditional leadership, civil society, local government, academics, and our communities. As indicated, the intention was to learn from experiences of these countries. As we came back, we collated a report, gave the report to the IMC headed by former Deputy President Mabuza, engaged in more than a year of consultative processes in the respective provinces, culminating in a national summit held in May last year. All this was with the intention for South Africa to agree <laughs> on a communal tenure system for our country. That process has in government commenced in earnest. Please note, Chair, this is a direct answer to the question posed. And the focus is to ensure equitable access to land and to ensure attainment of legally secured tenure. Kosima Vuso has referred to what we agreed upon in May. 
After our, our agreement, we took it to the IMC, and this particular matter is ready to go to cabinet. Land tenure being a component of land reform, the department has committed to discharging its constitutional obligation in terms of Section 25, Stroke 6 of the Constitution by ensuring land tenure rights are legally secured. The communal, the communal land bill that is currently being developed mainly provides for the following. Transfer of communal land held in trust by the state to communities and community members occupying such land. The registration of the communal land. The administration of such communal land. Community rules, customary rules, dispute resolution mechanisms are also accommodated. Communal land tenure reform policy and bill is an attempt to address the challenges identified in the communal land tenure and administration summit in order to provide the much needed secured legal tenure to the residents of the communal land. On current solutions, Interim Protection of Informal Land Rights Act, EPILRA, provides for the temporary protection of certain rights to and interests in land which are not otherwise adequately protected by law. Noting the power and constraints of EPILRA, the development of communal tenure legislation will provide the necessary relief to the people in communal areas. As I go towards concluding, fast-tracking socio-economic development of rural communities. Rural development is a cross-cutting program that calls for partnerships with multiple stakeholders, both within and outside government. The budgeting, planning, and implementation of these programs cuts across different departments and the three spheres of government. It focuses on, but is not limited to, the establishment of rural business initiatives, agro-industries, cooperatives and vibrant local markets in rural settings, the empowerment of rural people and communities, especially women and youth, and rural communities are still faced with challenges related to lack of and inadequate services and related infrastructure for service delivery. The provision of services and allocation of resources should take into consideration the complexities and unique challenges facing each rural space. This therefore calls for adapted and realistic models of service delivery. Strategies and resources for provision of services are in different sector departments and different spheres of government, calling for coordination and integration for these to maximize their effectiveness. Key infrastructure of good quality available in rural areas. Infrastructure is important for provision of services, e.g. water, electricity, sanitation, etc. The quality and condition of some of the infrastructure in rural areas is of course very poor. There is therefore a need for rehabilitation, maintenance, as well as construction of new infrastructure. Some of these requires public-private partnerships. The department through the rural development branch is enrolling on the program for the repair and rehabilitation of rural and farm access roads infrastructure program. The roads on these lists were mapped and shared with other government departments and entities responsible for roads in the country. Further, the department under its rural infrastructure development mandate has committed to undertake implementation of rural roads that fall within the categories of the FPSU access roads roads to rural villages in traditional areas, farm areas, farm access roads to state farms, 
the animal health management program which focuses on rehabilitation of degraded lands to improve crop production, debushing as well as infrastructure to support the livestock industry. The River Valley Catalytic Program, whose primary focus is to revitalize irrigation schemes and the development of small holding farmers who focus on horticulture, grains, to send to support the livestock industry. The Agribax program was introduced the, with the aim to support rural enterprises. This was to be implemented through three key integrated and interlined facilities. Farmer production support units to support smallholder farmers by providing capacity building mentorship, production and mechanization inputs. The AgriHub, which will be used as a triple P center for agro-processing of produce from local farms, manufacturing, packaging, logistics, distribution, and access to national and international markets. The facility has to be self-sustainable and economically viable with the appropriate public, private, and farmer models to facilitate joint ownership. The rural urban market centers, here it is the collection and distribution center to sell into large population urban markets. The facility has to be self-sustainable and economically viable. Socio-economic infrastructure program whose aim is to ensure the department facilitates and implements basic infrastructure such as telecommunication, electricity, transportation, etc. A lot has been done, Program Director, to ensure that people are restored in the land of their forefathers. Guided by our beneficiary selection policy, we are continuously allocating state land to others and compensating others financially. Though the resources are limited, the road is still long. The department wants to ensure that skewed land ownership is being addressed and this government is emphatic that all South Africans must have access to land. All South Africans must have a better life. I want to end by saying a week ago we had a bilateral meeting between the department and the National House here on the issues raised today and some of the issues that one has been able to address and that process is ongoing. I thank you for this opportunity, Program Director. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm fortunate to back at home to be part of the CPA. As your community, you put in a claim, they investigate the validity of the claim and they transfer the land back to you. It's a simple transaction, really. You get new land. Traditional leaders in their communities, they are not requesting for new land. They are saying transfer the legal right to us. That's it. You are just signing a piece of paper to say, no, you can manage yourself. That's it. We are not asking for new land, but when you you ask this kind of question, then you get a long explanation uh, that you cannot explain yourself to say, what was the deputy minister saying, really? Uh, you know, President, God forbid, uh, one day the organization is out of power. We'll have to remind it that we begged you for so many years. We begged you for so many years, transfer the 13% of the land. And you know, once white people come back and take over, they will kick you out of the seat. I don't know where will you go. Because it will only be the village that is there. So it's really said that uh, when we are not asking for new land, we are asking for the minister to just sign and say, manage yours. We are already managing it. We just do not have the legal right to it. Over 90% of the CPAs are non-compliant. They do not live in the village. They are living here in the cities. 
the litigation, the amount of litigation against the department because of the CPAs is a lot. Over 90% of them are dysfunctional and members are taking each other to court. We have been managing the 13% for the past thousand years. There's a very minuscule number of of disputes and, and taking each other to court. So it's very sad when uh, we are asking simple questions, then there's a lot of, I don't know, you know, I do not want to be too frank. Let's go back to our program. I think the Minister of Finance is here. We accept the apology this year because uh, apparently he's out of the country. Uh, we have a, a new minister in the Ministry of Arts and Culture, uh, Mr. Ziziko. I thought I saw him earlier on. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Program Director Hossi. Your Excellency, the President, Matamela Sere Ramaphosa Kakamel. Traditional leaders present, ministers and deputy ministers, ladies and gentlemen, we have gathered here this morning to interact with an important and a critical stakeholder in our efforts as a government to transform and develop our country. Any step that we undertake as government without traditional leaders and their communities is bound to fail. Unity is a cornerstone which the governing party was founded upon. Therefore, to us, unity is sacrosanct. This unity I'm talking about is not of the governing party alone, but the unity of our nation as we pursue the programs of redressing the imbalances of the past. The challenge for nation building and social cohesion currently is thus to deconstruct the apartheid social structure, not only in terms of new laws, since this has happened already through successive progressive policy positions, rather, the task currently, which admittedly seems somewhat onerous, is to deconstruct the apartheid social structure in the psyche of many South Africans and harmonize it with ideals and aspirations of the new dispensation as enshrined in the Freedom Charter, the RTP, the Constitution, and later the NTP. The common tenant amongst all these policy documents, Mr. President, is about building socially cohesive nation. The department will continue to play a critical role as a nerve center of government program on social cohesion and nation building. The work remains critically as the legacy of colonialism and apartheid still lingers on and it has continued to texture social relations even in the current context of conditional democratic order. Government will therefore continue instituting legislative, policy and programmatic interventions that are geared towards catapulting South Africa into a kind of society we envisage in the Constitution. Social cohesion is in effect a transformative constitutional imperative. It is leveling a of all play fields of societal polarities beyond color, creed, religion, which is amply enshrined in the Constitution, which clearly obliges all of us to ensure and uphold the right of equality before the law. The Department has undertaken, Mr. President, a number of programs that are aimed at promoting social cohesion in rural areas. Among those programs are as follows. The promotion of indigenous languages is very critical in the development of society. We must understand that language is a like, it's like a storeroom of our culture and tradition. In further assisting the institution of traditional leadership 
in their efforts to build cohesive society. As part of annual programs led by the department, annually, in February, we will mobilize others in joining UNESCO commitment to linguistic diversity and celebrate and promotion of mother tongue languages, contributing to the preservation of African languages and promotion of use of these languages as a human right. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights broadly states that I quote, no discrimination can be on the basis of language, close quotes. The Use of Official Language Act is a legislative instrument that, among others, promotes the use of a South African languages and through which the, there is facilitation of access to government services, knowledge and information, and show redress for the previously marginalized and those in rural areas in particular. For this reason, Mr. President, African language experts are supported to enrich the domain of African languages using the African languages buzzard support from the department. The institution of traditional leadership has produced heroes and heroines that defended our freedom and independence through their lives. Leaders that refuse to dishonor the cause of freedom. In recognition of their contribution, Mr. President and the Program Director, the department developed and implemented what is known as a resistance and liberation heritage route. Through this project, Mr. President, homage will be paid to the heroic contribution of traditional leaders. Some of the traditional leaders identified include, among others, not limited to King Skukuni, Gungunyane, Makado, Oshumato, King Inza, to cite but a few. The department has provided financial and technical support to the provinces to conduct physical feasibility studies which will guide the provinces on various forms of memorialization of heroic traditional leaders. The department is working tirelessly, Mr. President, to ensure that all provinces are represented in this process I just spoke about, and that women leaders should also be recognized. We have a process underway, Mr. President, that is aimed at declaring royal palaces as heritage sites. This will involve all the kings and queens or people assigned by them. This is part of our efforts to also document our oral histories. The great place at Mkrekezweni in the Eastern Cape has been declared a national heritage site and is one of the sites that have been nominated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site together with other sites related to human rights, liberation and reconciliation, as well as Nelson Mandela legacy site. The reburial of traditional leaders who fell during the wars of resistance, Mr. President, this program is aimed at giving back dignity and the recognition that these leaders of our people deserve. These projects must be understood within the context of our program of the transformation of heritage landscape of our country. Kakamela Bamusanda, Nolibuangamanda. No, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, Minister Zizikoto, thank you for for the presentation at least to a certain degree we can vouch for for the work of the department we will not just criticize everything that is in front of us uh, and of course uh, both of you sitting next to each other uh, you have just graduated after a while from the youth league so we are looking towards you to understand what we want better uh, than others. So both of you will be visiting you more often so that these programs can, uh, you know, be proliferated. Yes, all three of you, you are correct, uh, Minister. 
<laughs> no, I'm just looking at the generation just above me, not uh, the old, old one. <laughs> but of course, we recognize the, uh, you know, the incoming uh, speaker in the program, who is also one of uh, the former leaders of the Youth League, Minister Siklesi uh, Galal. The platform is yours. Thank you, uh, Program Director, the Chairperson of the House of Traditional and Khoisan Leaders, Hosi Siachulu, the President of the Republic, His Excellency, President Ramaphosa, all ministers and deputy ministers who are here, Amakosi, all traditional leaders, members of the House, chairpersons of provinces, the portfolio committee, in particular the chair, colleagues and all. Ours is to respond to that call that the movement issued to all of us that we must make this year to be a year of decisive action to advance the interest of the people. And in advancing this interest, ours is to develop infrastructure in rural areas. I will therefore take you through the work we are doing and we will be specific. One of the, pre of the program that the president announced in the SONA was that of Ueli Sizwe Bridge. This seek to address the plight of the people of rural areas in ensuring that they are able to have bridges so that abantu anabazugwa zugi ekoli ingashe and bape penotisha na bobonke. The department has entered into an agreement with the Department of Defense and we are working to implement the Welly Sizwe Bridge in the following provinces Free State, Eastern Cape, KwaZulu Natal, eh, Mpumalanga, Limpompo, and Northwest. I'm not sure whether this presentation is not there. I thought we would beam it because I would like to focus more on slide eight and nine of this presentation. I'm saying this because through this program, we want to demonstrate the commitment we have as the government to ensure that we deliver and we deliver on time. Now, this program aims to deliver 288 breaches by 2025. We want to ensure that at least this financial year, as the President announced in the SONA, we complete the construction of 95 breaches. 41 breaches were completed in the previous year. Those are in Eastern Cape and KwaZulu Natal. We have taken a decision that we will build 16 bridges in Eastern Cape, Free State, KwaZulu Natal, Limpombo, Mpumalanga, and Northwest. 16 each, and that account for 96 bridges. Our plan is to ensure that at least per quarter we build a single bridge. Now, Jose, we will be going out with the deputy minister and our traditional leaders to inspect these bridges so that we don't come here and speak as if we are planning and planning and not implementing. The commitments we make is what we will implement. 
So per quarter we are going to build 24 bridges and that will result in 96 bridges uh, during this financial year. This will create 6,270 job opportunities uh, per financial year resulting in 17,280 job opportunities during this MTEF period. We will be also focusing on ensuring that those who are enrolled in this program are also trained so that they will have exit plan and other opportunities thereafter. There are other programs that we will uh, be embarking on in our rural areas. These include upscaling expanded public works in rural areas by focusing on Zimbabwe program. And I'm sure the concept of Zimbabwe clean wagwemkwako by Omama and others. We know that program and its effect in areas such as Guazulu Natal and others. As Minister Godwa indicated earlier, together with the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture, we will focus on ensuring that palaces become heritage sites to preserve culture, history, but enhance rural tourism. We will release, uh, we will increase the release of land parcels for the use by our communities and development. Lastly, we have taken uh, issues that have been raised here. Jose Mavuso, we have taken that uh, all issues we have raised, including that of Gamma House and others. Some of the issues you've raised belong to provinces, but we are one government, and we have MinMEC where we will take those issues to and try to attend. I cannot leave here without uh, reporting while Minister Matiba Kotongwana is not here. The issue that you raised earlier about the payment of Izinduna have been resolved in Guazulu Natal. And we agree that the national government will pay uh, the back pay all that what we are owing uh, and then the provincial government will continue from there and pay the rest going forward. So that matter is now resolved and I believe the KZN government have also reported on it. We want to thank the president in that regard, the former minister of Home Affairs of, uh, of, of Kokta as well as Minister Kotongwan. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, uh, Minister. Because uh, the Minister of Finance is not here, before Minister Lamola can come in, we will give a few minutes to Minister Barbara Crisi so that she can respond to some of the issues the Deputy Chairperson had raised. The, f the floor is yours. Allow me to thank the chairperson of the National House of Traditional and Khoisan Leaders, Jose Siatlolo. Let me acknowledge His Excellency, President Ramaphosa, fellow ministers and deputy ministers, and all of our esteemed traditional leaders here this morning. Let me start by sharing with you that during the COVID pandemic, our department began to establish a memorandum of understanding with your predecessor. Unfortunately, he passed before we were able to conclude that memorandum of understanding. However, we did sign it uh, in July, 21st of July last year. And it covers all aspects of our work, 
from biodiversity to forestry and fisheries, climate change, waste management, and so on. And in November last year, we had a two-day workshop. Many of the leaders who are here today attended that workshop to talk about how we would make practical examples of implementing that memorandum of understanding. And the follow-up workshop where the program of action will be tabled for everybody's consideration is in two weeks' time, Friday, two weeks' time. What I can share with you is that, um, Honorable Deputy Chairperson, is that in the Eastern Cape in 2020, I gave 5,335 uh, traditional fishermen 15-year rights. And those fishermen are organized into 73 cooperatives, and they have a wide range of support from local government, from traditional, uh, from provincial government, and also in some instances from commercial banks. Similarly, in KwaZulu-Natal, in 20, early 2020, I allocated 2,084 traditional fishermen and women with 15-year fishing rights, and those particular fishermen and women are organized into 36 cooperatives, which are all receiving um, different forms of support, and in particular from our side, our entity, Isimangaliso, which is the authority in the St. Lucia Wetland Park, is working very closely with two of those cooperatives that are in the Nibela area. We have a major bioprospecting agreement with the Khoi and the San communities. We also signed that agreement in 2019, and it ensures that one rand from every ton of rooibos that leaves the farm gate is placed into two separate trusts, one for the Hoi community and one for the San community. I'm told to date the amount of money that has been accumulated and um, the communities themselves have set aside that money for purposes of education of community members is in the region of about uh, 12 million rand. There are a range of other bioprospecting agreements, as you correctly indicated, around aloe products. I was trying to get the numbers. I unfortunately haven't managed to get them before I spoke here, but I will be giving that uh, to you before we leave today. What is also important, Mr. President, is that we have a number of land claims on our national parks. And we are working with seven communities in Kruger National Park, where instead of having all sorts of debates, which uh, don't necessarily lead anywhere, about how communities will, be, will benefit, we have agreed with those communities that through our commercialization strategy, where we are concessioning out restaurants, uh, guest facilities, and so on, those communities will be receiving a direct regular monthly income from those concessioned facilities. And again, I think this is something that is much appreciated because it will be used for a range of community development projects. We're also working with traditional authorities on the outskirts of our park to increase the land offerings in our national parks. We have agreements with private landowners where we take down the fences and private lodges are able to allow their guests to go in and um, view animals in our national parks. We want to develop similar arrangements with uh, traditional authorities around our national parks we are also looking, in addition to tourism, what other offtake agreements there could be. It's normal practice, uh, and you would know this, uh, President, 
that in a, in a protected area you do have to cull game because the numbers uh, increase too much. So what we want to see is whether we could have an agreement if we take down the fences and that game can roam on traditional land that those traditional authorities and their communities can benefit from our game meat strategy. We have major partnerships with some of the big retail stores and we see this as being an important way to include the offerings. Of course, um, in the forestry sector, we are now piloting agreements with traditional authorities where communities become owner growers of what we call our category B and C forests. We have a, a very important pilot agreement in the Eastern Cape and we are looking at that as a mechanism that we would want to replicate in other areas. In addition to this, there are our expanded public works programs that um, provide um, employment, particularly for women and young people in, uh, I think, in the region of about 40,000 work opportunities in rural areas. And we have also begun a program to uh, make sure that we employ young scientists who are graduates in rural communities as environmental monitors in a three-year program so that we are able to encourage those who do, who do science to go back um, into conservation as a long-term career. I've just got the statistics which I thought you would be interested in and um, my officials are saying that there are currently 10 traditional beneficiaries in the Eastern Cape um, in, in partnerships with commercial companies that are exploiting aloe ferox. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, uh, Minister, for uh, that response. I think two issues that we will bring to your table post this engagement. The first one, uh, currently in the country there are too many stories in the news of animals that are on the loose. I don't know if it's negligence of the owners of the animals or what is happening, but it's too frequent now. The second aspect uh, that we would like to bring to your table that you will not necessarily respond now, we will take it as part of work uh, DC, is that of the availability of uh, the leopard skins. I think we, we know our history. We used to you know, roam with the animals and hunt whenever there is a need. But now they are fenced in all of these uh, game farms. Whenever you need a leopard skin, you need to go through, you know, jump through the fire to get it. So perhaps the department can assist us. Whenever there's a traditional leader that requires a leopard skin, it should be a simple process for you to get one. So I think we will take it up uh, with your office. We will discuss that. Thank you. Uh, to, we are now going to call the uh, leader of the young people in the cabinet, uh, Minister Lamola. Can you please whisper to the president that he assents the traditional courts uh, bill into an act so we can get working? Thank you very much. Uh, th thank you very much. The, the President of the Republic of South Africa, all cabinet colleagues, the Deputy Chairperson of the National House of Traditional Leaders and the leadership of uh, Contra Lesa and all um, traditional leaders present here. Mine is very brief. It's just a progress report on the matters related to finalization of policy legislation and constitutional matters that the, the work stream is uh, working on. 
The first one was the review of the status of House of Traditional Leaders and Khoisan Leaders as a branch of um, government. This uh, still needs further processing and engagement with the um, <coughs> provisional uh, houses um, within the, the National House to provide the proposals that uh, we can then consider. The second one is to consider the proposal for the National House of Traditional and Khoisan Leaders to have its own chamber in Parliament. This uh, requires further engagement with the uh, Parliament. The third one is to consider the proposal for the National House of Traditional and Khoisan Leaders to be part of the procession of ceremonies such as the State of the Nation Address and also being part of the parliamentary joint sittings. These also need further discussions with the Parliament and also the Presidency. The fourth one is the, to consider the proposal of traditional leaders being part of the composition of state boards. The National House will still consult with the newly constituted provincial houses to provide the proposals and um, for our consideration in, in government. The fifth one is the review of the processes of reinstating the powers and roles and functions of traditional leaders. This uh, requires uh, <clears throat> lots of amendments to the Constitution, Chapter 7 and 12 of the Constitution. It will also further needs a policy direction for us to then effect those uh, constitutional discussion. Review the election system used for provincial and local houses of traditional leaders and cohesion leaders. This is in relation to section 50 of the, um, the act which determines that provinces may establish local houses for the area of jurisdiction of a metropolitan and district or local municipality. Once local houses are established, Section 53 determines that all recognized and senior traditional and senior and Khoisan leaders will automatically be members of the local house established for the particular municipal area. There is no election process involved as far as it relates to senior traditional leaders and senior Khoisan leaders. The composition of the provincial houses is regulated by the provincial legislation. It is a provincial competence in terms of Section 49 and section 212 of the Constitution. There is some, however, guidance in terms of this uh, legislation. The provincial legislation will, will have to be amended by provinces once the policy issue is clarified with regards to this issue. Number seven, finalize the pieces of legislation and policies that affect traditional communities and address those that impact negatively on the institution of traditional leaders and rural uh, development. This is what the, the, the program director was referring to. The traditional courts bill has recently been passed by the National Assembly by, for, for, for the presidential assets. I hear you say I must whisper. I have uh, we have already submitted everything for, for the president to consider. <laughs> so... We do believe that it's uh, receiving the due consideration of the president. Concerns regarding Spluma were discussed as part of the land summit held in May 2022. A clear process for the review will be part of the implementation of the outcomes from the, from the land summit. Consider the proposal on the full-time status of members of, of houses. A review of the legal and financial implications underway. In terms of Section 29.2 of the Traditional and Khoisan Leadership Act, the members of provincial houses who are elected to represent such provincial house at the National House may not be full-time members of the provincial house. A similar exercise may be necessary in respect of provincial law. Participation of um, traditional leaders in municipalities, Section 81 of the Municipal Structures Act, a new Section 81 was introduced into the Structures Act through an amendment that was part of the, of the Act. The new Section 81 is comprehensive and includes details on the roles of traditional leaders and who participate in municipal council proceedings. The new Section 81 commences on the same date um, as the Traditional and Cohesion Leadership Act of 01 April 2021. 
there needs to be processes to concretize how traditional leaders would like the act to be amended. But as things stand, we do believe that this section 81 has given guidance and clarity in terms of how that participation should happen in the local municipalities. So these were the issues under our work stream, which we continue to process. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Minister. Before we call uh, on the President, I would just like to call uh, two sweepers uh, from the side of Contralesa, the President, uh, to give him a few minutes, Jose Mukwena, and then I will come back to the platform and call. Uh, My, my chairperson, to our one and only, our president, Mungaka, our colleagues, Maoshi, and our ministers, including leadership from Contralesa. Ours is just to say we concur and agree with all what was said by our chairperson when he was giving his opening remarks. Two, we also agree with what was said by the deputy chairperson of the House when he was uh, giving his remarks. <clears throat> Ours, Mr. President, is to just come in on the issue raised by Minister of Justice, who happens to be Motoul <coughs> uh, My leader, it's on policy and legislative processes. Mungaka, we are worried as traditional leaders. Our policies in our country are influenced by some NGOs who are funded by some imperialists. They've got offices just outside Cape Town, outside Cape Town Parliament. They are hovering there. They are just looking at any legislation that had to do with traditional leadership they will attack it. Mr. President, you are aware, my leader, that uh, now the traditional court bill, as was rightly said by our chairperson, it has been in Parliament, as far as I can remember, for the past 15 years, while yours truly was still down there in Parliament. It is passed now by both houses. It is in or on its way to your table or on top of your table, my leader. The question why it is not signed is because those NGOs who are funded by imperialists who want to make sure that anything that had to do with traditional leadership is destroyed, they are threatening that they will take you to court if you sign it. It is a fact. And those NGOs are there, and it is a fact. Mr. President, last, two weeks back, when you opened our house in Cape Town, you sensitized us as traditional leadership to say, let's look very carefully on how we run our initiation schools, and we took what you said very seriously and we agreed as traditional leaders that we're going to take your advice and move with speed in making sure that uh, that practice is not rubbished. But those NGOs, Mr. President, are not saying what you are saying. They are saying government must do away 
with initiation schools. Mr. President, that this culture of Ogungena and Ogutwala, where there's got so many mistakes and so on, some are abusing this system. There are processes that must happen when those things happen. Those NGOs are not saying, let's stick to what it was meant for. They are saying, those things must be done away with. And maybe that Professor Musuma is here, the chairperson of CRL Commission. He is dealing with very sensitive issues. He is saying, let's correct this and that and so on. But those NGOs are saying, anything that had to do with culture and whatever, please do away with it. Let me finish by saying the TKLA, you can see that uh, that legislation was crafted by some consultants. By some consultants. Because some of the, of the provision in, in that legislation is foreign. It's not African. It's very foreign. Now we're saying to our president and our politicians here, let's please look at what I don't want to preach gospel to the converted, but it is a fact, my leader. What led us where we are now? Some of the politicians, my leader, when you ask a question, like what our chairperson was asking a question, instead of responding to issues, they become arrogant. Become arrogant and ridicule your question. What led us now to have these coalition governments in municipalities? Not that some parties have got more people who love them now. Our people decided to stay home and not to vote. The question is why? What led us there? To an extent where we beg people to assist us to govern in some municipalities. It cannot be, Mr. President. It cannot be. Let's go back and check exactly what is it that we have done wrong for our people to dump us and decided to stay home, not to vote for us. Uh, President, Mr. Cecil Leflew from NKC. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I want to start off by acknowledging our chairperson of the National uh, Traditional and Khoisan House. I, I also want to recognize the, the Honorable Excellency, our President, Ramaphosa, all the esteemed ministers present here, and all the traditional leaders that are here. Uh, I also want to acknowledge the uh, Chapter 9 institutions that's also here today and uh, deal with our issues as well. So we also want to welcome them. Uh, and also the Deputy Chairperson of the House. Uh, allow me to start, and uh, I must also use that phrase that becomes so popular, and that is to say, all protocols observed. Uh, so, uh, as the Chair of the National Coalition Council, we were encouraged by the comments made by the Honorable President Ramaphosa in the 2023 State of the Nation Address, where he emphasized the importance of forging a consensus among all sectors of our society 
to rebuild our economy and address the developmental needs of our communities. Our President also stated the enhancement by work that the institution of traditional and Khoisan leadership has come up with in the form of INVEST Rural Master Plan. Uh, he also emphasized the complementarity needed to reinforce the district development model and that the traditional leaders is critical in that regard. One of the resolutions taken at the local government summit last year was that the master plan should be shared with all municipalities so that it can inform their planning initiatives. Such an approach should complement and reinforce the district development model. We will need the Council of Traditional Leaders in identifying the endowments, competitive advantages, and the potential industrial opportunities of each of the localities where traditional leadership is found or is founded. These are critical building blocks in building resilient, safe, sustainable, prosperous, cohesive, connected, and climate smart communities. Skilling our people is critical. In doing so, we must harness indigenous knowledge systems and also emphasizing the importance of culture in our societies. On behalf of the National Khoisan Council, our leaders and our communities, it is important to emphasize that the Khoi and San communities want to form part of the critical building blocks to help ensure our economy and the country are resilient, safe and sustainable. Uh, the Khoi and San demonstrated our commitment as a cultural indigenous community where we negotiated the biggest indigenous knowledge deal with the rooibos industry, resulting as an important economic development victory. The rooibos benefit sharing agreement unlock an important opportunity for the Khoian San cultural community to enjoy the long fought benefits for our poverty stricken communities. This opportunity helped to unlock also benefit sharing based on indigenous knowledge of cultural communities, also around other high value plant species in the rest of the country, such as buhu and honey bush. Uh, we want to thank the Minister Grisi for the role that her department played in achieving this victory. We must today acknowledge here that we got very good support from the Department of Deaf and we applaud them for what they did for this, uh, for this empowerment of our communities. This is a key opportunity and we are happy that our government also formed part of it. Uh, while it was a key moment, much still remains to be done for our communities to become those resilient, safe and prosperous, climate smart peoples. Mr. President, the Department of Arts and Culture is currently busy rolling out the National Khoisan Heritage Route. It was a process that came along over more than 20 years as it was started in 2001. We call upon the government to fully support this project by making sure it is adequately budgeted for and that the implementation phase will be executed without any further delay. This project will preserve and promote our heritage but it will also empower our people through cultural tourism. We, the Khoi and San, are still not meaningfully included in a South African land reform uh, legislation 
participation and consultation. Land reform are unfolding in many important ways without the Koi and SAM. Our exclusion from land reform opportunities through communal land and restitution processes remains highly problematic. Further, if the district development model is going to be successful, we will need the Koi and SAM cultural communities not to suffer exclusion from the investment rural master plan due to the traditional and Khoisan Leadership Act not being implemented and communities not being recognized and included in the traditional leadership system as yet. We are very much concerned about this, that uh, all these things are happening in, on, in the field of land reform and land restitution and the Koi and San stay behind because they are not recognized yet. Uh, so by time that we are recognized, eventually uh, a lot of things are already behind our backs and we cannot influence it anymore. That's our fear. Uh, so Further, if the district development model is going to be successful, we will need the Koi and San cultural communities not to suffer exclusion uh, from the investment rural master plan due to the traditional in Koi San uh, Leadership Act not being recognized once again. Uh, we receive reports from several communities where they encounter responses from municipalities that they cannot assist the Koi and San due to their non-recognition as yet. Honorable President, our state should guide the local development level on an urgent basis to remove all blockage and access to justice to ensure inclusivity and participation of this project. We also want to use the opportunity to continue to emphasize that our communities continue to suffer serious institutional, social, legislative, and related challenges. Our poverty and unemployment levels remain at serious challenging levels. Notwithstanding these ongoing challenges, our communities want to form part of rebuilding our economy and contributing to becoming climate smart and resilient communities. But we have to, on an urgent basis, remove these structural barriers. They continue to battle with due to the mentioned challenges. In closing, we as the National Coalition Council want to call on the Human Rights Commission to report back on the implementation of the 2018 National Report on the Human Rights Situation of the Khoi and San in South Africa. No implementation thereof occurred, leaving our people in a state of flux. We also call on Honorable President Ramaphosa to meet with us on an urgent basis to discuss these mentioned concerns. Mr. President, you made that promise two weeks ago, so I'm just reminding you again about that. And I want to thank you all. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Leflu. Uh, before we call on the President. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, let me take this opportunity to acknowledge and appreciate the presence of the citizen number one, the president of our country, together with the ministers and deputy ministers, uh, members of parliament, members of the National House, our chairpersons from provinces and their deputies, and the executive members. Question Council, 
Contralesa President and Deputy, and all our structures present here. Chairperson, we have agreed as members that the Deputy Chair will state our case. My standing here is to confirm that the Deputy Chair has done that with precision, and we'd like to thank him. <clears throat> Since Chair, we will never accept the unaccepted that makes us uncomfortable. We will agree that some of the responses fall short of our expectation. And let us call this, since you are next to the President, call it round one. And round two will be coming. I thank you. No, definitely, Kosima. Uh, uh, round two will be us with the deputy president as the leader of the IMTT. In one of my closing remarks, I was going to mention it to the minister in the presidency and the DG, Ms. Baleni, to say we would like to have that meet and greet with the deputy president as the head of the IMTT so that he can steer. Uh, all the ministers to the right direction. I'm not uh, making my closing remarks. Uh, His Excellency, uh, it's time for you to come and have a word with us. Thank you. Let's be seated, please. Chairperson of the National House of Traditional and Khoisan Leaders, Kosi Milton, Siakulo, Rapula. Deputy Chairperson of the National House of Traditional Khoisan leaders, Nkosuma Vusola. Ah, Sweli to me. The Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Ms. Tembisi Lenkadimeng, Cabinet Ministers and Deputy Ministers here present. Chairpersons and deputy chairpersons of Provincial House of Traditional and Khoisan Leaders, members of the National House of Traditional Leaders and Khoisan Leaders, representatives of the Chapter 9 institutions, and chairperson of the House of Khoisan Leaders, President of Contralesa, Directors General who are here present, and ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a real honor for me to be present here and to participate in this, the second dialogue of the National House of Traditional and Khoisan Leaders with government. I'd like to express my gratitude to Deputy, former Deputy President David Dabe de Mabuza, who attended and facilitated last year's dialogue. I also wish to thank former Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Dr. Nkosa Zanatlamini Zuma, who led the team which supported this House to ensure that last year's dialogue was a success. It was also the first time this approach was used to come together and to dialogue and to 
have a thoroughgoing discussion about matters of critical concern to the traditional and Khoisan leadership in our country. I wasn't there at last year's dialogue, but I'm informed that the discussions and the engagements were robust, yet they were also cordial. But they were also honest and straightforward, but yet they were also constructive. And most importantly, I'm told that they were grounded on practical realities our communities are experiencing. That is exactly what our communities expect of us as leaders, as you as traditional leaders of our people, and ourselves as leaders who have been elected, I expected to do a whole number of things, particularly at this time when the world is still recovering from the effects of the pandemic, when we are coming to terms with climate change, which as we heard earlier is really having an impact, particularly in the rural areas where you lead our people, and where we are contending with rapidly changing geopolitical dynamics, it is at this time when we are called upon to give leadership to a nation facing some of the harshest socio-economic challenges in recent, mem in recent history. Our people expect that we will make 2023 the year of addressing the in their interests by focusing on the key priorities that we have identified. We are called upon to find solutions to the challenging situations that they face, some of which are posed by the high cost of living, unemployment, continuing poverty and inequality. Our people expect that we will succeed in our commitment to bring down the severity and frequency of load shedding and eventually end it altogether. People also expect us to have implementable plans to put an end to crime and corruption and ensure that we all live in safe and secure communities. Our people expect leaders and government officials who serve them with dignity, with integrity, commitment, and diligence. We must keep these expectations in mind throughout the, what we discuss and throughout this dialogue. As I listened to the inputs and to some of the responses that were given I have a sense that yes, we are focusing on some of the key issues that our people want us to focus on. Starting off with your opening remarks, Chairperson of the National House of Traditional and Khoisan Leaders, I couldn't but agree with the sentiments that you expressed, but more particularly in relation to your wish to work with government to make sure that we address the challenges that our people face. Yes, there's been slow implementation in some of the issues, and yet, as you correctly also acknowledged, there has been progress in a number of areas. We considered today the progress that has been made since the last dialogue in 2022, and you have also considered the address I delivered during the annual opening of this house in the NCOP chamber on the 23rd of February of this year. I would like to appreciate the updates that have been given by ministers, the mere presence of so many ministers and deputy ministers here in this engagement just goes to demonstrate the seriousness with which we in government regard 
the relationship with our traditional leaders. In my view, this reconfirms our commitment that we made, that we are determined and prepared to work with our traditional leaders to address many of the challenges that you face. I was pleased to be advised that issues such as, which you raised as a very important issue, the issue of invest rural strategy, has now been mainstreamed into the integrated rural development strategy of the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development. In addition, in addition, SALGA and the House are clearly taking forward the resolution of last year's local government summit in terms of which the Invest Rural Master Plan was to be shared with and brought to the attention of municipalities so that it can inform their local economic development programs. In this regard, I am advised that the House has now been invited to SALGA's National Rural Development in Daba, particularly with the intention of creating a platform for the engagement or for an engagement in the Rural Invest Master Plan. Now, this in my book represents great progress. When this House, yourselves as traditional leaders, first came up with the Invest Rural Master Plan. A number of people in our country just dismissed it. And I welcomed, I welcomed when Gossi Masangu, his, rest, his soul rest in peace, handed it to me. And I'm glad that it has now been mainstreamed and it is being taken very serious. Certainly, on our part in government, we do take it seriously and our interaction with yourselves on this plan is meaningful and I do believe that it will lead to the development that we all seek to see. So in the end, matters that you raise are being taken up and what Deputy Chairperson of the House also raised here, which I'd like to respond to are also being taken up. During the opening address of 2020, uh, February 2023, I touched on the important work that the Commission of Khoisan Matters has already embarked on to facilitate the recognition of Khoisan communities and leaders, and let us continue to support this work so that we can soon have a Khoisan lead, the have Khoisan leaders taking their place, their rightful place in the national, provincial, local houses of traditional and Khoisan leaders. I am pleased about the progress that has been reported by Minister Creasy with regards to the very good partnership that has been struck between our Khoisan leaders as on the issue of rooibos. We need to mobilize around a new way of doing things, which is in the form of the district development model. Your participation in implementing this model is very critical. We must all redouble our efforts in implementing the district development model. And we must go beyond just talking about the DDM, we must now move towards implementation of that plan. What it really seeks to do is to break down this silo mentality of doing things, that things of a developmental nature are best done when we integrate our work, when we have a joined up government where every key role player or stakeholder in any community work together. As we said before, we will need your counsel in identifying the endowments, competitive advantages, and potential future industrial makeup of each of the localities with yourselves as the traditional leaders 
of our people. Deputy Chairperson Mavuso raised a number of issues, and he was very colorful in presenting some of these and very demonstrative uh, in putting them forward. Lastly, drawing from his own experience as a person who was born and has lived in the rural areas, and uh, he gave a lot of color to quite a number of things that he was talking about. But let me start off with the one that he articulated first, where he spoke about the need for uniform treatment of traditional leaders. There has been a sense that there is ununiform treatment of traditional leaders, and you as our traditional leaders correctly raise this issue, where you have a sense that other traditional leaders are treated specially and differently. And of course, everything that we seek to do as a government is to make sure that there is uniformity and that there is equitable treatment of the various uh, sectors of the citizenry of our country. And you therefore want uniformity and standardization in terms of treatment and the provision of support to traditional leaders. The Khoisan colleagues are not mentioned because of the process that is still underway and that you have acknowledged. I should say that, yes, this is a principle that we are committed to. And in the course of raising this matter, you of course raise the issue of the chambers, the chambers that are in provinces, and a number of provinces do not have any of these chambers. But I particularly liked the way you were raising it because you were very positive. And the minister who was sitting next to me there whispered in my ear and says, President, this is a quick win. Because we do have a number of bus uh, 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 buildings that are strewn right throughout the country. And I see no difficulty in getting some of those buildings, and some of them were used in the past, in, during the apartheid days, no difficulty at all in getting some of these buildings transformed into chambers so that, yes, we should have those cham chambers used for good effect. So for me, it is easy to do. It is low-hanging fruit. And the minister, Nkadimeng, uh, uh, as well as Minister Zigalala, will make sure that it happens. Uh, they should go ahead and indeed make it happen. If they do not, you should help me in making them do their job, because it must be done. Now, you spoke about the handbook of Amakosi. It's a very good point that you raise, and indeed, you even call it a secret handbook. There's no secrecy about uh, this, this handbook, but you do want this red handbook uh, to be uh, put on the table, and you recommend that this must indeed be fully packaged and finalized, and you request that the minister should speed up the process and provinces to budget accordingly for the implementation of the handbook. In the end, this is a matter that affects the, fi the, 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 the fiscal process that uh, we have to embark upon. So a handbook like that is accompanied by a full budget. So this is a matter that needs to be properly processed. And indeed, we do agree that we do need a handbook. The handbook will also help in making sure that there is no ununiform treatment of our traditional leaders. It will lead to uniformity. It will lead to people knowing exactly uh, what they are expected to do as they exercise their leadership and what their tools of trade will be because the handbook will also encompass things such as the tools of trade. You have raised the issue of tools of trade 
in the past and Kosi uh, Mukwena uh, even had came to Mashamba and had a lunch and we discussed the issue of tools of trade and we agreed that tools of trade is a matter that should be embarked upon and addressed and the handbook will help us in making sure that the tools of trade that you need to execute your task as traditional leaders is clearly set out and where there are budgetary impl implications we should be able to do precisely that. You raise the issue of budget for the structures of Amakosi and you say the structures of Amakosi are not budgeted for in the same way and you say it depends on the province concerned. Yes, it has been the practice and through, for instance, getting to a point where there's a measure of, a measure of uniformity, the whole process of the handbook and budgeting for our traditional leaders will then be streamlined. You correctly raise the issue of youth development. There are many youth structures, you say, in areas of Amakosi that need assistance in order for them to develop. It can either be community development, entrepreneurial development, and this, we believe, is a very good point to raise. But once again, it has budgetary impl implications, and it needs to fit into our development trajectory. But indeed, we do want the youth of our country who are in the rural areas to know that development is a process that we also want them to, to be a part of. And you need the funding of development of young people to realize their potential in economic development. So this we also agree with you on. The issue of release of land is a matter that you have raised over and over. And I'm really glad that we have had all these various discussions, including what Deputy Minister Squatcher was reporting on. The matter, yes, is going to come to Cabinet so that we can look at the full proposals that have come forward from the interministerial task team, as well as the various summits that you have held. Kosi Siasolo was saying to me, this is an urgent matter, and it is a matter that you have dealt with for thousands and thousands of years. And I agreed with him that yes, that is so. We, however, need to deal with some of the challenges that keep on arising around the land issue, particularly the release of the land. And of course, your proposal is release the land to us as traditional leaders. And while I agree with that to the traditional authorities, while one agrees with that completely, he and I, in whispering to each other, said we must, however, find a solution to some of the practices that we have found seen emerging where some traditional leaders sell off the land, get the money, and pocket it for themselves. Without, yes, without that money being there to benefit the community as a whole. This is a problem. And Khosi Siasulu agrees that we need to find a solution for this. As the matter comes to cabinet, we will want to have heard your proposals, as he was suggesting to me, on how best we can deal with this. But as regards our level of seriousness in dealing with this matter, I can assure you that yes, this matter has been outstanding for far too long, and you would like the land to be released, and that is precisely what we aim to finally do. But in doing so, we must come up with the modalities, the modalities that will avoid conflicts in our communities, 
the modalities that will ensure that there is full harmony in our communities and where there will be accountability as we deal with this very serious and important matter. I do believe that we should be close to a full solution on this matter because it has been discussed over and over again. You also raise the issue of mining for economic development. This too is an important matter. There are, you say, a lot of mining activities happening in the areas of Amakosi. This indeed is without any doubt the truth. And you say that one cannot point to any benefits that accrued to the communities as a result of mining activities. And you make recommendations in this regard that yes, DMRE, which is the ministry that is responsible for mining, must find space and time to engage Amakosi as opposed to them just going to areas of Amakosi and without any form of consultation. And you also say that this is what Deputy Chairperson Mavuso was saying, this will avoid a situation such as the one that we had in Ekolobein, where there could have been proper consultation and uh, Minister uh, Gwede Mantashe is not here because he would have put forward uh, the approach that they had. This too is important because mining activities, yes, in the main, happen in areas, in the rural areas, where, which are under the jurisdiction of our traditional leaders. Quite often, as the deals are struck, we do, through legislation, insist that there should be involvement by our people through uh, the, the laws that we have put in place, be they the broad-based Black Economic Empowerment Act or not. And quite often we find that when trusts are set up, trusts that are set up, at times the, f the funds that accrue to those trusts are dealt with in a way that creates divisions amongst our people. This we may not want to talk about, but that is the reality. As government, we are now having to deal with a number of situations where trusts having received money, we find that the funds that have accrued to those trusts then lead to lots of divisions. My traditional leaders, we do need to find ways of addressing these issues quite honestly and frontally so that whatever progress is made in this regard is the type of progress that will be to the benefit of our people. Minister Kreese's report on how the issue of rooibos is being dealt with in relation to the Khoisan communities it's a wonderful example that we should all emulate, where a trust has been set up and the proceeds thereof are then used for the benefit of the community as a whole, without creating any doubt or suspicions about how those benefits are being utilized. Minister Zizi Godra spoke quite eloquently here about the issues of culture. And uh, Deputy Chairperson Mavuso raised the issue of cultural tourism for rural economic development. This is a matter that we have discussed in the past and we agree with the approach that you have articulated in this regard. And you also have added that the Department of Tourism should provide a guide on profiling tourist attraction areas. And we have also said, you also need to be actively involved, and I do believe that with the, the Rural Invest Strategy, we should be able to identify a number of iconic places in the various rural areas, which can lead to economic development 
through tourism. Your relationship and partnership with Salga is to be applauded, and we applaud that. Yes, we have promoted the King's Forum concept, and I'm glad that it has received resonance. But it's beyond just kings because we've also got queens. So it's the Kings and Queens Forum where we would have an opportunity to engage some of our kings and queens uh, on a number of uh, important issues. In this regard, you have also raised another important issue that, for instance, when we, for instance, open parliament, we should have an opportunity or a practice where we will be able to have our traditional leaders participating. On infrastructure, infrastructure, as I've often said, is the flywheel that really should drive our economic growth. And we want to see this also happening in our rural areas. You heard the eloquent explanation from Minister Zigalala about various projects that we are going to be focusing on. Yes, the Deputy Chairperson Mavuso zeroed in into a project that has been under discussion for more than 20 years, the Umzimbubu Dam. And as we announced in SONA, we are now going to proceed with it, and it is a two-dam type of project which we are now going to start. And the preparatory work should now get underway. But that speaks volumes of the infrastructure projects, and some of which are quite catalytic, that we need to embark upon. We have identified the issue of bridges. And the issues of bridges are quite critical because some of the bridges are washed away whenever your areas experience floods that just damage the infrastructure. But at the same time, the bridges also play an economic and a social uh, key role. Minister Zigalala, as you had, will be going around the country, making sure that the bridges that we have committed to build are indeed going to be built, and I have no doubt that we are going to see a great deal of progress in that regard. In this regard, Minister Zigalala will make sure that, yes, he engages with yourselves and goes to those places with yourselves uh, so that we can ensure that those bridges indeed are under construction. And time permitting, I would like also to accompany you and Minister Zigalala and his deputy as we go and look at all these bridges. You've raised another important issue, which is communication and digital technologies. Uh, you have said you appreciate the, that the former minister responsible for communications and digital technologies has done quite a lot of work in this regard. As you correctly say, she requested that you submit to her the addresses of some of the traditional councils, which she has already put in the plan that the department will be focusing on. And this is the work that will be continued by Minister Gungubele as he's now been put in that position. Now, this, in my view, represents progress in relation to an important issue that you have raised. It is concerning to us that uh, rural areas in our countries have very poor connectivity. And this is a, prob the, a challenge that we are determined to address. Not only because a minister like Mantasha lives in Tala, where he often complains to me whenever I call him for work-related issues, he says, President, I don't have connectivity because I'm in Tala. So we want to solve the problem for the many Talas around the country so that we have good connectivity. You raise the issue of the safety of traditional leaders. This issue was raised quite pointedly with me again when I was in KZN 
meeting our traditional leaders there. They raised this issue in quite a sharp manner and you've given us the figures that up to 40 or so traditional leaders in KZN have been murdered or killed. And you yourself, Deputy Chairperson Mavuso, you say you have your own challenges, although you did not describe what those challenges are. Now, we are committed to providing safe environments to our leaders, be they elected leaders, be they leaders like yourselves, and traditional leaders I know in KZN, Eastern Cape, and Limpopo are facing these difficulties and death on a daily basis because the killing of traditional leaders has gone on for far too long and cannot, as you correctly say, be tolerated any longer. And in this regard, I do know that the Ministry of Police is working with a number of you as traditional leaders, making sure that processes and measures are put in place, yes, to help secure uh, the safety of our traditional leaders. But I've often said the strength of being able to do so should also revolve around the community, uh, the community uh, policing forum process because it is through community forum policing that we will be able to deal with some of these issues. When I was in KZN just over the weekend, I got a really good report in one of our districts where the chairperson of the community policing forum informed me that their community policing forum in which the traditional leaders also participate has brought the levels of criminality down in that district and uh, things such as murder, even uh, gender-based violence, and things like robbery and theft have really come down because all the key role players do participate in the community policing forum and all the key people do uh, help to bring down the levels of crime. And this would also uh, uh, Im uh, impact on another matter you've raised which you re with regard to human trafficking. Uh, because human trafficking is another uh, major challenge that you face. You also raised the issue of traditional police. It is the view of Amakosi, you say, that the rollout of traditional policing concept will ease the pressure that our men and women in blue are faced with. Uh, you believe that if, we, if recruitment is done properly and deployment is done, the same traditional police may be used to protect Amakosi. Uh, yes, that is the proposal that you are putting forward and you would like traditional police to be recruited. This is a matter that, yes, should be discussed. Right now we are on a big recruitment drive, bringing in more police trainees into the police as we promised in SONA. So this needs to be discussed properly within the context of what the police uh, service is all about. You touched on customary initiation. This is a matter that I have raised in the House of Traditional Leaders and I even raised it this year. Uh, the Customary Initiation Act, yes, was passed with the intention for the betterment of the initiation practice. And however you say, proper funding and training of the structures establishing, uh, established in the Act uh, uh, still needs to be done. And this is a matter that we need to discuss properly amongst ourselves. And the Act takes certain powers, you say, of Amakosi and gives them to structures that are composed of people who do not even understand the initiation process at all. Now, this is a matter that we should discuss. The understanding has always been that traditional leaders will continue to play and must play a key role in this whole process because this is a cultural matter and you are the repository 
of culture and traditional practices. So I don't think we should have a misalignment on this matter. We do want to see participation of our traditional leaders in this regard. And uh, traditional houses uh, should uh, participate. And if you want to propose an amendment, by all means, let us hear what the amendment will be. But yes, I do continue to want to say that we do want to bring down and eliminate the incidence of deaths of our young men who go to initiation, healthy, robust, and young people, and they come back in body, box, uh, body bags. This must stop. Initiation should not result in the death of our young men. Initiation should be a rite of passage to manhood, to adulthood. So if we can work together on this, and which we must, we can bring down the levels of deaths that are currently occurring. I spoke earlier about the recognition of our Khoisan uh, traditional leaders, and uh, this is in process. It is a matter that is being addressed and will be finalized. Um, yes, there is the other matter which you touched on just very briefly, the issue of the effect of disputes within the institution of traditional leadership. And uh, we need to have processes of addressing some of these disputes. Some of them are huge and big disputes. We need to find a way of ensuring that the disputes are properly addressed. I'd like to thank you for raising the issue of scholar transport in traditional communities. Some learners, as you say, are compelled to attend schooling very far from their homes. Some are put into boarding schools because their schools are just too far away from their homes. And you abhor the fact that these young people are transported in open buckies where their safety is always at risk. And you do recommend that government, especially the Department of Basic Education and Minister Motseka is not here, should appoint scholar transport entities that will ensure that the children are properly transported. And this is a matter that the Department of Basic Education uh, is work, continues to work on and as the country is vast, this matter will continue being addressed. On health, which you've raised quite sharply, you raised the issue of mobile clinics, we couldn't agree more with you. And we do believe that the issue of health should be attended to seriously. And this is a matter that we need to continue addressing. It's a budgetary matter as well, but mobile clinics particularly in villages and in rural areas, would be the best way to go. You also raised the issue of disasters in areas of Amakosi uh, in your document. And yes, we agree that the issues of disaster, particularly disaster preparedness, should be given greater attention and in traditional authorities I would argue that we should have people who are properly trained, who are always on the ready to make a positive intervention whenever we have disasters because a number of our areas have now become prone to disasters, be they fires, be they floods, and be they damage from the winds and the elements. So it is important that from a traditional area point of view, we should be able to do all that. Now, we thank you, Deputy Chairperson Mabuso, for presenting such a cogent uh, uh, presentation. Uh, we have taken careful notes of some of the issues. On some issues, there is progress. On others, we will be able to forge ahead. The one that Minister Nkadimeng uh, and Deputy Minister Ngamashe, Ngamashe are going to be focusing on 
is to make sure that we do make progress. As he stood here, the Deputy Minister said, there's now going to be real action. Things are going to begin to happen. He's going to give himself time, working with the Minister, to go around the country and uh, working together with Deputy Minister Pak Stau as well when it comes to local government uh, authorities. They will give themselves time to address the many challenges that our traditional leaders face. And I believe that during the course of this year, we will see a great deal of progress. And when we come back next year, we will be able to have seen great progress. I appreciate your approach that yours is not just to criticize, but it is to put the honest truth on the table but with a view of ensuring that there isn't only debate, but in the end, we do find solutions. Now, you also spoke about the traditional courts bill, and we accept that millions of our people live in areas under traditional authorities. 30% of South Africans still live in rural communities much as more and more people have moved to the urban areas, up to 30%, almost, if you like, 20 million people. A third of our population still lives in rural uh, communities. Communities that are under the control of Amakosi across the length and the breadth of our country. Section 211.3 of the Constitution states that courts must apply customary law when that law is applicable, subject to the Constitution and any legislation that specifically deals with customary law. What this means is that the Constitution, therefore, acknowledges the originality as well as the distinctiveness of indigenous law as an independent source of norms within our legal system. The traditional courts bill that I am currently in the process of considering recognizes that the status of customary law in our country is constitutionally entrenched. We are confident that customary law in our country will continue to evolve within the context of the values and the norms that are consistent with our Constitution. It is envisaged that the traditional courts bill will form part of this developmental process. As government, we pledged, yes, to work with you on this, and I will be giving consideration to this bill, and uh, soon uh, you will have line of sight of what our conclusion is. And in doing so, Kwasi Bukwen, we are not going to be influenced by some Western NGO or whatever. We are going to be influenced as we consider this law by what is set out in our Constitution, the values, the principles that are set out in our Constitution, which I'd like to add are also not inconsistent with your own approach. So as government, we pledge to work with you to take all this forward. We acknowledge that, yes, as a country we face and as a people we face many diverse challenges. And our people face many extraordinary socioeconomic hardships. And in a number of areas, they are losing patience because the challenges that we're facing are quite enormous. So I therefore urge you to continue working with us. What we have set out, what our ministers and deputy ministers have reported today, shows real constructive engagement. It shows the commitment on the part of government. You had raised issues that seemed intractable. But over time, over the past few months and a year or so, we've been able to address these issues. 
And as I started, I did say that I particularly wanted to thank Deputy, former Deputy President David Mabuza because when I gave him this task, he took it on seriously and traveled around the country and engaged with many of you and held a number of engagements, even summits on land and a whole number of other things. So we have made progress. And I have no doubt, as I said in Parliament the other day, that Deputy President Mashatile will also be able to take this work forward. And he will be ably assisted by a department, a ministry that is fully geared and revived and re-energized to ensure that we address the many challenges that you are facing. Whenever I travel around our continent, and whenever there are occasions for uh, ceremonies when I get invited like I was invited in Ghana, it is always a pleasure to see the harmonious way in which governments and traditional leaders work together. And I think we are, we are having that as well. You referred also to how the father of our democracy, Nelson Mandela, started off by setting up the National House of Traditional Leaders, although it was called a council then. We have continued in that way as well, and what we are doing now is to deal with the specific challenges and problems that our traditional leaders face. It was a joy for me, as Minister Zigalala did report here, being in KZN and informing our Isindunas there, who had been raising the really serious problem uh, that they have had for years, to inform them that, yes, much as it has taken time, their concern has now been budgeted for, and they are going to uh, get uh, the, the, the payment that they had been advocating for for years. Because they provide leadership, leadership in society, and they were overjoyed. What that demonstrated is that, yes, even if we will not be able to do things immediately as they are raised, we will, yes, be able to discuss with yourselves, amongst ourselves, and in the end, the decision, a positive decision will then be taken going forward. So I urge you, I urge in Dajesi Ahlulu, or let us continue working together, there may well be a sense that, no, we're not moving fast enough, there isn't enough progress. But what has been reported here today and articulated demonstrates progress that is being made. We do this because we take your role, your position, your standing very seriously. And that is why we've even said we will set up another forum which is the King's and Queen's Forum, so that we are able to discuss matters that uh, concern the higher level of monarchy and also concern uh, the, 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 the broader level. And this is where organizations such as Contralesa play a key role, and this is where uh, institutions such as the National House of Traditional and Khoisan Leadership plays a key role. We started off, remember, by not even having an inkling of recognition for Khoisan leadership. We now have, and we're now making progress, even at an economic level, and we are going to continue addressing those issues. So I urge you to continue working with government and indeed with all social partners. And it's good to hear that you're now working with Salga and your participation at local government level is going to continue being worthwhile, robust, and engaging, and it will be problem-solving related. It is this approach of working together that informed the decision to establish, yes, the interministerial committee, whose work you are already seeing. Uh, I wish to assure the House that the various ministers and portfolios continue to be engaged in this work and this partnership. In conclusion, Chairperson, I want us to focus 
on the issues that will improve the well-being of our communities. In the end, what we aim to see is that we must transform our rural areas into comfortable, livable, and safe areas. Yes, for everyone, especially for the women and the children of our country, we must further acknowledge and start thinking about changes that will happen to our communities as we move on with the process of development. So I want to thank you all for this very collaborative approach of the National House of Traditional Leaders and Khoisan Leaders in facilitating this interactive dialogue. And I thank you for giving us this opportunity to meet with you and to engage with you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, uh, President, for your Uh, 